Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Hamo Kalaba. And right now, we need to talk about Neva a traitor. But if I've heard it before, so if you'd like to read it again, please go right ahead. Basically, slow the men rose in agreement, and Militar Bezek Ruslan will become, well, a little bit a little crazier here with Big Papa Sunglasses himself, Ferdinand Shoni. So right now, I'll be honest here, I've restarted uh, basically where we left off like in the last video. I've redone this. This is my third time doing this, just because uh, regime stability has been an issue for me. Um, right now, we have issues as well, but 109 days is so much better than the 49 that I had at the end of last episode. So basically, I'm actually trying to get way more reform support, even though we went and are going towards the very, very conservative side. At this point, I just want to make sure we can get enough so lower social agitation, lower preparedness, just so when we have to go to war with uh, the this group here, that they go bye-bye. So... Our guys are ready to go. I put a lot of planes, I believe, on our soldiers. And, of course, we're still in Iran because who doesn't love Iran? We all love Iran here. we all Iranians. Totally. Cool. But as you can see, um, well, they don't have that many guys. And they're gone. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Hope you guys are having a good day. We have a couple comments to go through. Let's see. Let's start off with... Uh, okay, so a lot of you guys said, when we had that little decision in the uh, focus tree, to, whether the left route for the Gang of Four, the centrist Dangus route, or the right wing or the right side with the uh, conservative route... I chose the conservative route first just because, and as many of you asked or told me to do, we did the the, the, the one on the right, or you guys recommend I do the one in the center, I did the one on the right just because I wanted to see what that route is like. And I apologize for my mispronunciations, I'm really excited about this. Um, but, like, the campaign's not over after this. We're After this end of this episode, we're going to go back and do the center Dangus route, I promise you, because that's why I wanted to do this campaign. I've done the full reformists. We're doing the pretty much mostly conservative route, and now we're going to go down the centrist route for a lot of fun. But we're clearing the trenches. Uh, I honestly can't remember if I read this or not, but those who can discuss their grievances with us in a peaceful and civil manner are not the issue. Even the people who gather peacefully are not the root of, the, of our problems. It is a loudmouth, so it's rabble rousers who preach immediate radical change in those with vandalize and riot. They are the issue. We need to make a list, check it twice, and round up the most vocal and violent of these protesters so we can have a return to normalcy. And then the Reich's Polizei Gesetz. One of the core issues that has led us to where we are today is our use of unified police, the ARPO. If we're going to convince the people that we are generally trying to reform, we need to address their complaints about our use of the police. Therefore, we will reform the ARPO and the Reich's Polizei. There will be a fresh, clean start for our police agents. By being more transparent and sticking to newly procedures, which will respect the rights of German citizens, we should be able to address one of the people's core problems within our administrations. Because more stability, regime stability, which we can really, 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 really use. The only reason why I'm going for reforms right now, technically, even though we're on the very conservative side, is because we need more regime stability. So, that's literally the only reason why we have it. So, our soldiers are prepared to go and I, I want to let them rip as soon as we possibly can. I want them to just massacre everyone in our way. Like, I... I'm ready for it. I am ready for lots of fun and for the international community to condemn Albert Speer, but as long as you smile and you're having fun, that's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. If you had fun, you won. War crimes? They're not war crimes if we're not at war. Cool. And then, uh, conservative side. We can't do this one. If you want to do about local independence, please go ahead. But a centralized apparatus. The ARPA had the right idea. A centralized police force across our nation. Headed by the federal government is the most efficient and effective way to police our nation. Many of its or our citizens don't like this approach. Part of the reason they are marching is to let them have more of a say over such matters. If this chaos has shown us anything, it has shown us that we cannot trust local governments or the people with such an institution. The federal is in the right here. Very good. Alright, so they're going to try and come to bushwhack us a little bit and get, try to get more supplies, but we don't want to get any more supplies. No, no, no. Oh, Iranian tanks? They have no match for our 20 combat with helicopters, so very nice. Oh, I love these choppy boys. Let them die. A few doctor tapes. Oh, yes. Also, there was another comment saying that I missed some sort of uh, Oldenstadt Burgundian uh, intel agency thing here. So... Uh, yeah, what happened? Uh, so, there was a, yeah, Intel agency thing about the oldest shot. There's nothing here right now. Uh, the, oh, R&D and CIA encryption. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, there's nothing here, actually, but a few Dr. Tapes. We've been successful in our attempts to drive wedges between Canada and America. For a while, we've been working to gather tapes and recordings in which American officials, politicians, or public figures deride the people of Canada or the government. This is not incredibly difficult to find, as Canada and the U.S. have something of a friendly rivalry already. In addition to these recordings, however, we will make our own recordings in a more hostile tone. These will include things such as biting criticism of Canada or phony American plans to annex our state. 
Those are phony? By including these tapes along with other tapes whose authenticity can be easily verified, we can trust that the Canadians will believe our own edition, editions as well. We've delivered these tapes, anonymously of course, to several Canadian news outlets. The response amongst the Canadian people predictably has been one of outrage at the American hubris and disrespect to their allies within the UFN. While this may not drive the Canadians from the organization, we expect them to be much less cooperative in the future. Yanks make for pair of friends, it seems. I've read that one before, but I want to read it again. So yeah, really? There's nothing else here, I think. Central America, Africa, Middle East, which is disappointing. Uh, Oceania, Southeast Asia, East Asia. So really, all we've left is Antarctic satellites, which kind of sucks. But hey, there's got to be an end sometime, right? Nice. Get some organization. Help out. Help out. Destroy them all. Oh, oh, oh! No, we lost. Oh, that's not good. Um, hmm. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back and reload the save then. Uh, we already read this one, so we can read that again. Please read it, and I'll be right back. All right, everyone. So I've gone back in time again and make sure that we can actually do well here in Iran. And as you can see. Well, the, the Iran looks a whole lot better. Yeah, I really actually decided to focus a little bit more on encircling and destroying enemy units this time, so... This could be a lot worse. Oh, and there they go. But I do want to say what we've already done RSG9. Experience has taught us that we need a highly mobile, well-trained, and heavily armored police unit to deal with dangerous situations that the average policeman isn't ready to deal with. We'll put them under a regiment that would make the army man blush. These chosen few will be the cream of the crop of our police forces, trained in urban combat, close quarters combat, negotiation, hostage situations, and more. And we're currently doing salvaging the economy. The global oil crisis has crippled our economy, and that's putting it lightly. We cannot just continue without some sort of plan of action. We need to decide and quickly what our next course of action will be. We need to be quick and decisive if we're going to salvage what remains of our economy. Um, and right now, we can do this again. I'm going to let it just kind of sit there for now, and I and I, I know doing vast political promises is bad but i needed to get another like 120 days for that so we'll be fine i mean the campaign is not gonna be much longer as you can probably tell uh the war's over but go and do this too doesn't really matter to me at this point supremacy of bus is nice um yeah i mean as someone said in the comments from the last video as well uh yeah speer has got some really good writing for himself like this is really good writing a lot of great story writing and stuff like that but um let's see I think I've already read this one before, so if you want to read about this, please go ahead. It's by Eric and joining the RSG9, so a necessary peacekeeper in the coming days. Nice. And also right here, we have got to victory in Iran. Oh, we did it with our help. The monarchists have triumphed in their civil war. Our access to their oil reserves is once again secured. And we can resume production and shipments. Our help was deceive, or our help was decisive in turning the tide, and our allies have not forgotten about this. We've earned a lot of goodwill with the monarchists as a result. So, cool. And I want to come back here. Uh, so, at 30... Okay, we have 21% support. Alright, so at this point, um, the gang is intervening. We don't want that. The gang is attempting to restore order, and at least how they define it. This is against Shippea's wishes. Ah, uh, screw it. At this point, we're going to go full conservative, because why not? Who needed regime stability? Hey, 17%, not bad. People are falling apart here, and I'm ready. We're just ready to go. Actually, I found some extra planes that we had hiding here too. So we got extra fighters here as well. We are we are good to go. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna make. Oh man, we're gonna do Laban's Realm like square or something here. Lots of Laban's Realm here. But if you want to read about all the money in the world, please go right ahead. But strict oil rationing. Some of the more liberal leaning members of our country have proposed that the government should subsidizing or subsidize purchasing oil off the market to keep meeting our demands. These bureaucrats are totally insane. The cost of oil on the market is astronomical and outrageous. Our country would likely bankrupt itself if we attempted to subsidize our current levels of consumption. We simply don't have the capital to do this. We must re instead resort to rationing. It will hurt our economy in the short term, but it's a better solution than destroying our economic future with such a heavy burden on our shoulders. Cool. All right, so we gotta keep doing this stuff too. Grand emergency funding. We got oh preparedness is already maxed out. We need less social agitation, which is really bad. Um, we're gonna lose PP here. We don't have a lot of PP anymore. Wow. Might as well. Ah, uh, Volpalman, good. Join the group. Join the group. What do we have here? Ah, oh, show, show them yes. Sending the Oppo. Uh, social agitation will decrease, which would be good. Negotiate with the students, which I don't want to do, but we probably have to do that anyway. So. Now we're gonna need more PP. We only get oh I'll get well, we get quite a few quite a bit every day. Send in the Oracle, we don't need that one anymore. Um hold a speech. Uh one point five percent regime stability. We're not looking very good anymore, but oh well whatever. Middle East and flames. Oh. Authorize Uh these guys are done guys, so we can Oh wait. What do you mean? Wait, what? Yemen is finished. Oh man. No Oh! They're still fighting Oh! Oh, oh okay. So these guys are all fighting all sorts of groups here. Uh, I don't, I uh, don't want to help them out right now. Now, guys, we're supposed to already be done. 
Egypt. I mean, you can help them out, I guess. Yeah. Why not? Actually, if they get that... How many times do they get the German bombing runs debuff? Is it just once? That would be cool if they got it several times, so... We'll help them out. We'll help them out down there. The Italians probably don't really like us for doing that, but whatever. We don't really care at this point. Hide, no. Um, no. And then send in the Orpo. We'll decrease. Go and negotiate with them, just because we want to lower that, too. Send in the Orpo and negotiate with the students. Probably a bad idea to do both, but whatever. That's not very good. 66, huh? The gang is interfering? No. Stop it, gang. Stop it. Grand emergency funding. Both of these we don't need to do because we are at 100% already. I want to launch, launch Fall Auto. The military is prepared to strike against Shona. It's time to yet prepare for another adventure in the East. Yeah. But Energy Sharung's Gazettes. Energy Sharung's Gazettes. By passing this bill. Oops. Well. By passing the bill, uh, the Energy Insurance Act will guarantee that other members of the economic pack will have access to affordable petroleum. This is going to cost us. It won't be cheap to subsidize this fuel, but oil is absolutely vital to not only our own economy, but all the members in our own economic sphere. If we're going to keep our economic pack together, we must act. Opening ports, we're going to that, please go ahead, but members of all, members of autarky. Self-dependence is truly the way only forward. Hitler wasn't right on many issues, but this is, his vision was spot on in one regard. A strong, healthy Germany is one that relies on itself and no one else. Buying petroleum on the global market is what got us to the point in the first place. Why, then, would we double down and essentially gamble by throwing more money to the foreign oil? It's madness, plain and simple. Germany must come first. We must relearn from the past and become self-dependent. Close economy, get more regime stability, which means absolutely nothing to us now. Um, Not really much here we can really do, so... Sure. And, oh, they're finished. Yeah, I mean, they're looking pretty good. Hope these guys outwin. You know, that'd be nice if they actually did win, but, you know, there's nothing we can do. Um, just gotta keep an eye on this stuff up here, really. Oh, we don't have enough PP for that? Wow, that's really bad, actually. Do that one, too. We need 70. It's tempting to restore order, at least, as they define it. I don't think we'll actually be able to get that one done. Oh, that's not good. Uh, we got four a day. Hmm, actually. What if we stop doing that? Let's stop doing that first. We get six. I don't think we'll actually get that one done, huh? Will the gang actually intervene? Well, how are we supposed to launch this and do this at the same time? That makes no sense. Send in the Orpo. We don't get anything from that either, do we? I mean, we can still do this, technically. Which would be good, I guess. But it costs so much. It's such a huge cost. Should have got rid of the gang when we could have, you know. It's alright. Members of Autarkia next. So be it. So be it. And there we go. Alright. The gang is probably going to come back soon. Preparedness, preparedness. We need both of these, honestly. I will decrease. Well, let's do that one. Send the Orpal first. And what if the gang does anything that's going to be really bad for us, but the plan going forward? Ludwig Erhard is nothing short of a genius. Without his fervorous laboring and planning, our economy would be half of what it is today. A miraculous growth is a testament to his brilliance. Erhard's economics is also what is currently killing the economy that we've worked so hard to build up since our civil war. It's clear that we need to take ch to change the course and come up with some kind of solution. The question is, what do we do? What changes now? The gang is intervening again. I mean, that's nothing we can do about that. Right? What happens if we let that go? I have no idea. So, just send the Europe again. Send the R&D. Members of Autaki. Not bad. Do it again. Just do that one. That's fine. Doesn't matter. Still trying to go conservative. We have no... Uh, yeah. That's not good. 1%. 1%? But it's okay, guys. We're still investing in, in civilian investments and infrastructure. So, don't worry about it. Just go home. Don't worry about anything that's happening here. Mm, don't worry about it. And we want to launch Fall Auto. I want to... Is there nothing we can do with these guys? Because there's no way we can get over here. I mean, yeah, we got up here as well, but... Sending our entire army over there is going to be a bit extreme. And we've already lost all of this for the most part, so... I'm not really sure. You guys actually might be able to hold out here, though. Oh, send A to Shona. Um... The witch's Freikorps goes to war with us as well, and that's down here. Vogelstab? Freikorps? Oh, they're, yeah, they're down there. Um. 
I mean, I guess I could send you guys over here. I mean, supply would be really, really bad. Spend some more, we'll give you more PP. I guess go? I guess? I don't know. He's launching his intervention soon enough. Garamura has broken free, huh? Well, we should have a really good supply through here, actually. Let's get the guys in here initially, and then we'll just probably pump, pump ourselves out. Guys, please land. Are you going to land or not? Alright, the plan going forward. Well, we'll get more PP now. Well, yep, let's go. The greatest invasion. Uh, well, if you want to do that, please go ahead. Sometimes I just wish I was never interested in politics. Oh, and can we not go ahead? Ah, there we go. Now we got him. Just go ahead. Back to the drawing board into mine. That could put it together. Cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, do they have any divisions? Yeah, they do a lot. Up to 111. I mean, that's why I combined everything, everyone here together, so we actually have, like, you know, a, a lot of strength for this stuff, but... No, stop it. Hopefully this will conclude in, like, 55 days, just because it's not very good for us. Let's go, let's go, go. Uh, tanks, you guys, you gotta keep going. There's no stopping the tanks here. They've lost a lot of guys. Wow. But not nearly enough. Also, we should have absolute air superiority, right? Yeah, because I'm I'm using 2,000 planes, fighters, and 1,200, like, attack choppers. Like, I'm not worried about this at all. We will easily be able to kill them all. Look at that. They're, they're, the number of planes is just dropping drastically. Like, nine a day. Seven to nine a day. It's awesome. Or maybe that was just two that time before. Whatever. Just imagine you're part of the Wehrmacht right now. And, or you're, you're part of the Regierung here. And you, you just see thousands of choppers in the sky. Attack choppers coming straight for your butthole. I mean, just gunning down with machine guns and rockets and stuff like that. That sounds so terrifying and awesome at the same time. Let's go, 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 go. We don't got time for this. The, the regime's going to collapse because of what the devs think should happen. Fourteen percent's not bad. We might actually be able to eke it out if we get up to here too. We'll see. If we need to do, I will do whatever it takes to make sure that we can actually see what's going to happen for the very conservative side here. So, and sabotage enemy. Yes, bribe these guys. Yes. Fourteen percent's not great, but hey, we're doing it. We're doing it. This one gives you two point five percent. That's not very much. Okay then. Uh, we should get quite a bit more here actually. Guys, keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. You ain't done yet. Guys, how are you not winning here? Seriously, how are you not winning? They almost have, don't even have an air force. They, they must be doing force defense or something. Yeah, I don't like this mechanic at all. Yeah, I mean, we need we need more time for this. Ooh, there we go. Seven days, that's good. We get 2.5%. That's still not going to be enough, though. Ooh, anything else that we can do down here? Maybe, yes, yes. Just be reactionaries. That actually lowers our uh, regime stability, which is really bad, but, you know, whatever. Guys, can you please just win? Just come on. Just come on. Their army is garbage. These are literally just slaves over here. And, the, like, the rest of whatever the SS was. And, and, yeah, I know the SS is really strong, but still. Uh, come on. Anything else here? Please, please, please. For the love of God. Actually, yes. No, maybe not. Sabotage the enemy? Huh. Anything else? Any way to get more regime stability right now? No. Because we. I don't mind doing that one. But. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. I don't really understand how these guys are able to hold on, though. It literally makes no sense to me. We should be able to get something here in two weeks. Something within two weeks. Keep going. We're not stopping here. I don't understand how they can have this many divisions and this much strength. Yeah, we sent a lot of guys over there, but still. Still. 19%. Oh, actually, are we doing anything here? Yeah, we are, huh? Anything down here? Come on. Yes, bug political enemies. Oh, that doesn't really help us out too, too much, does it? No, does it? Come on. Come on. Give us something, for the love of God. Private campaign ended. We're going to go full this side then. Oh, that was really bad, actually. Eh, we'll get this one back. Come on. 
Just something, something. Nine days. Are you kidding me? We're going to lose because of regime stability. Don't tell me that. Please don't tell me that. Come on, pop something out. Pop something out here so that we can use. There we go. That's what we like to see. There we go. Okay, we got it. It's not going to collapse yet. It'll collapse eventually, but we're okay. We're okay. Seriously, how? How? How How are they able to set us this must do this? Like, yeah, I guess they consolidated power and stuff, but... I guess I just don't understand how much Jerusalem has been built up, or actually not been built up at all, especially with an oil crisis, and the terrible effects between, like, Germanization here, so... I don't understand how they're able to, you know, put up that much of a fight when there's mostly... Uh, well, there's a lot of slaves over here. I mean, tons and tons of, like, former slaves and whatnot. That'd be really cool. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested for the future. What? Why do we get these divisions? Get out of here, you garbage things. Get out of here. The death of the marshal. If you want to be right about this, please go right ahead. Guys. Move. I don't understand sometimes why they just say no. An unpleasant meeting. Okay. Um. Well then. The meeting room of the Lax comes alive was stiff with emotions. Alba Speer sat in the front and his hands were pressed tightly together. While his teeth grinded endlessly, the other five, the gang and Hans Spado, were mainly the ones convening with each other. All of them, however, and especially Schmidt, could feel the, still feel the rage emanating from the Big Daddy. Who hadn't spoken words since the meeting. Kiesing could cut the silence. Spado, you're saying we remain quiet? The general nodded. Right, and the hope in doing so is that the slaves will eventually reach down to us, seeing as how we will not plan any moves on our own. If I may, Ehad cut in, shouldn't we move our troops away from the border just to let them know we don't mean any harm? The moment he was done, his eyes flickered, his eyes flicked to the fear. We began speaking as soon as Ehad bit the cigar between his teeth. And let those bandits move in and pillage our German settlers, he shouted. The rest stared in silence. Ridiculous. This this is sheer insanity. They can't even control themselves to act peacefully. Let alone we decide to give them so much to trust that they do not deserve. Nobody spoke for the next few seconds, and Speer's eyes settled from one person to another. Then back again, and then back again, and his trembling hands scratched the table idly. What are you looking at me for? Come on, speak. Pretend I'm not here. Bolsheviks, a lot of you. I. Spado decided to turn his look to Kiesing and speak on his own behalf. Do you agree, then? If they begin to leverage diplomacy on their own terms, we could start things off strongly with them and use it to advantage. Kiesinger reluctantly agreed. Let the games uh, begin, then. Or at least he shrugged. Cool. And someone asked, what happens if Shona capitulates Germany? That's a very good question. I have no idea. But that's a really, really good question. I don't really want to find out right now. Oh, we need a little bit more fuel, don't we? The rebels reach out. Ooh. Oh, so, okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, everyone. So now it's January 4th, 1972, and I've gone ahead, for the third time in this video, played again before the oil crisis erupted to see if we had any other options. And right now... Um, I'm going to show you this. The State of the Reich. Uh, this time, the third time I'm filming this again for this single video. Went back, played it again, chose none of the options. Literally no options that gave us more reformer support. Including when we had the Slave Revolt here too. So, remember how, like, earlier in the video, I clicked on the thing for sending in the Orpo, which helped the boost conservative side, versus boosting or de decreasing social agitation by meeting with the students? Well, I didn't choose that one at all. Nope. Didn't do that at all. I only did the Orpo stuff. I only did conservative stuff. And we still only end up with this one option here. But we do have 69% regime stability, so... I'm getting I, I'm getting to know Speer's campaign way too well. But, the rebels reach out. Something had arrived in Helmut Schmidt's office and the con Reich's council eye that day. And he read every single line of it carefully. By the end, he was grasping the letter tightly, doubt coursing through his mind. Der Helmut Schmidt, Minister of Foreign Affairs. This is Willy Brown speaking. I am at the helm of Reichsbanner Schwarzrock Gold, naturally, but I come to you with an offer. Your government has been deathly silent as of recent, and is slowly beginning to annoy the army of free Europe. Some say that you are preparing for an attack, but I know better. Come, Helmut Schmidt. You have been the representative of Germany's more humane face, have you not? I ask you to present this letter to Herr Speer freely, I suppose, in the end. It is his letter to read. Now, this, here is what I have to say. We shall hold a meeting in Warsaw, in St. Alexander's Church. I pick it because it is a holy place, and no holy place should be a battlefield for violence. I will ask 
also ask you another perhaps more important thing. I'll show a peace I ask of you to come with only you and your diplomats. There's no need for guns to march between priests and crosses. I am uncertain if you shall follow through with this, but if you do, I will remain ever grateful for the move. And my final statement is this. Uh... To Hirschberg, to you. Helmut Schmidt, to Ludwig Erhard, to Kurt Georg Kissinger, to Henning von Trusco, I should be congratulate all of you for taking Germany so far. It was as dark as shadows before, and for a while I'd feared for its existence, but my hope was strengthened. And I'm joyous that the free, humane, and democratic Germany still lives. Thank you for your cooperation, and if all goes well, I shall be seeing you soon, Billy Brandt. There's no time to ponder, Helmut Schmidt had to choose. Speer is too volatile. Schmidt cannot defy him so openly. Yeah, trying to get this conservative is impossible. Keep going more conservative, unless you like start like halfway through the 60s. It's just almost basically impossible to do, so. Um, I really don't like it, but one way or another. When Helmut Schmidt stepped through the door into the St. Alexander's Church, he felt himself enter another world. Something about its air was not as oppressive and dreadful as the one he could feel outside. It did not echo the cry of slaves, the breaking of chains, no such thing. It was as if Schmidt was thrown into a different universe altogether, where none of this madness was forced to happen. There were only four faces he saw. The one he recognized was by face was, of course, Willy Brandt, but he could only recognize the others by association. One was Karel Josef Ostia, a Catholic priest who Schmidt could immediately recognize in his clothing. Another was Vyacheslav Chornoville, though he did not show much of him, and the last was Natasia Trojan, former NKVD agent and assassin of Wilhelm Kuba. He did not like her beliefs, though respected her guts to do such a thing. All of them, however, remained silent as Brand approached him. Well, it isn't the famous little Helmut Schmidt. With a wide smile, he brought his hand out and gave to, and the two gave each other a strong handshake. I take it that you're a bit more sympathetic to a cause than a friend of yours called Herr Speer? Schmidt at first bit his tongue. He didn't want to risk saying anything wrong, but then he just realized what exactly he was. Friend, he huffed a laugh through his nose. I'm not ex it's not exactly what I would call him, but that's neither here nor there. It'll be a pleasure to negotiate these dealings with you, Herr Brandt. I have much reason to support your cause. Brandt gave Schmidt a sharp look and a sly smile. To support implies that you have done nothing yet to aid the cause of the Reichsbanner. When he said that, Schmidt was filled with the need to take a step back out of anxiety, but instead let an amused yet nervous chuckle. Right you are, Herr Brandt. Right you are. Right, right. I'm sorry, just, I, I know this route... I know conservative spare way too well now. Oh, or just spare in general. Freedom or death, on behalf of the likes Banner Schwarzrock Gord, on behalf of the Army of the Free Europe, of all slaves that are locked in their chains and forced to work themselves to death in inhumane conditions, I demand for them to be let free at once, without hesitance, with, and with all the promised haste in the world. Helmut Schmidt nodded. You know, you are quite the bold one with your demands, Herr Brandt. The leader of the slave revolt merely gave a smile, and you are giving quite the lack of pushback, hmm? I would have expected a man of the right to be angry at this, but I appreciate the sanity nonetheless now. On the matter of protesters, the freedom fighters in Germany, the brave men and women with who wish only to liberate those that deserve not the wanton cruelty of the Reich. That has plagued them for decades. I demand that they all let go, to return to their homes in peace, and not for any police force, secret or otherwise, detain or harass or injure them in any way. Nor do I want the military to crack down on them. To Schmidt, this is almost like having a pleasant conversation with a friend. I cannot guarantee their safety, though. They would be hacked to pay if anyone decided to commit violence to them. But I'll let out a short laugh. Good, good, now let the final demand. He cleared his throat. On the matter of repatriation, I demand that Germany begin immediate and extensive reparations to all slaves and their families. They will be comp compensated in full. As for the evil that the Reich has wrought on them, they must be cleansed. Even if it will take decades for it to rinse away completely. The terms are non-negotiable, Herr Schmidt. Do you agree? Schmidt blinked once or twice at the last demand. That would have been put a major strain on Germany's budget. But what right did he have to deny them that? It took a more mere seconds to reply. This feels like, when I do the Gang of Four, this, this is a little bit more fitting for the Gang of Four stuff. This really is. Hopefully, uh, just in my opinion, like right now, I hope that this gets a little bit more reworked, which it might in the future. I know the spare dads are hard at work doing stuff, but I hope it does get a little bit reworked, because I'd like to see like an actual true conservative or middle route, because this is a lot in one sitting. But of course, but it took Speer's men mere moments. Speer's overseeing protection forces something different in mind. Catastrophe? Oh, well. I've gone down this route twice already, and we're going to have a fun time. Well, fun for us. Maybe not fun for them, but I don't care anymore. And I will, we'll go back in the next episode going down the center route when we can split into three parts, but Shattered Mirrors. I tried to make him understand. I swear, please. Helmut Schmidt had let go of any pretense of dignity and now was openly begging the man on the other end of the phone. A pity, though, because his interlocutor had none to spare for him. A laugh was the only answer to his pleas, one that had anything but mirth in it. How entertaining. How proud Helmut Schmidt is begging. If only if he could be in my office, I'd give half the Reich my Reich. To only to see her face came the fear's voice. 
I've always wanted to see the face of a traitor makes when he's reduced to begging for his useless life. Not a big loss, though. Rewards come to the patient, and guess who I've right outside my office? You wouldn't dare. That's right! The almighty gang of four! Ungrateful dudes, I saved you from Hadrish. I covered your crimes for years. You would be nothing without me. Nothing. But now I can finally have my revenge. Sweet, sweet revenge. For all the humiliations. For all the times you threatened me for you sniveling wretches. Don't try to flee, you little cheater. Don't rob me of my pleasure. I will find you and kill you even in Washington. Then the tone changed again, and Speer was laughing once more. Enjoy your last hours. There are so many things you can do. Hanging, poisoning, or the great classic. A bullet? Choose quickly, or I'll be the one to do it for you. Oh, before I forget, make yourself pretty. The Arpo is coming. The line went dead, but Schmidt was no longer focused on it. He was too terrorized to care about it. And not because of Speer's death threats. His fearful gaze was fixed on the mirror in front of him. His own reflection was staring at him, along with his father, and thousands of faces, all chanting the same word over and over and over and over and over. Traitor screamed his father, rage twisting his old face into a hate-filled grimace. Traitor left his own reflection, blood gushing from a hole in his forehead. Traitor, traitor, traitor echoed all the men, women, and children in his room. All of them dead, including himself. All of them dead, and it was his fault. His and his alone. Traitor, traitor, traitor. We still got the same image here. Cool. Gotta keep an eye on that. Catastrophe will be hall. Well, how about the fuel? Iran, where are you? Uh, did I skip it already? Eh, I'll do this group first. We're going to get a lot of fuel for what we're going to do, hopefully. And, other line. He'd finally done it. Speer finally done it. After haggling with the Gang of Four for so long. Listening to the bothersome demands all the same time and time again and again and again. He had wondered if he would ever find our escape to the madness. But here, as Speer stood in front of the Buxhala, his movements fluid, his speech sharp, his visions emboldened. What stopped him now? As he decried Willy Brunt, as he decried Rex Banner, the slaves both now and from who grabbed the rifles and shotguns and desired freedom, he felt liberated. How energetic he felt. He could barely contain himself after the speech was finished. Those violent thoughts he had of slaves being gunned down, men dying by the droves, now had become reality. Did they deserve it? Maybe not. Maybe they just didn't know better and thought that violent uprising was a smarter solution than to remain put in loyal the good subjects of the Reich. It didn't matter now. All the pieces were falling together, and the painting would finally become complete, and this would mark the beginning of a new era. Nothing better now, nothing. What does a man feel when he realizes he has made a horrible mistake? What have we done? We have done the right thing, and you know what? We're going to trade with the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic because... Oh, we're going to need fuel. We're going to need a lot of fuel. Um, Army currently needs a whole lot. Oh, no matter the training. Let's stop training first, guys. Alright, so current consumption is zero. Art port 90. Oh. Why are we still over here? I, okay, so yeah, this is very, this is weird. Um, well, that's not good, obviously. Well, let's take a look. Can we do this, please? Can you guys actually move? Okay, well, if we have to go from this side, this side's completely undefended, which is probably a really bad idea. <laughs> we'll try this. If it doesn't go well, then I'll reload the save. It's fine. Yeah, okay, this is bug. This is really bug then. Because we can't, we couldn't, like, I, you saw me put a front, front line here. Like, you saw the front line. And it, they weren't moving, so that's bugged or something. So, oh well, what, what can you do about it, right? Whee. There we go. Hopefully, um, where are you guys going to be at? Actually, realistically, just make it a solid front line. I, how many divisions do they have? I can't imagine they have, a, like, a hundred? Maybe a thousand? Oh, oh, that's not too bad. Up to 19, that's not bad. They have no manpower, so... Yeah, I'm... Okay, so like I was trying to say earlier, I think there's something in the game here that forces you to go ex strongly reformist. There's some sort of hidden mechanic here, I think, that makes you that forces you to go strongly reformist, which I don't like at all. I don't like hidden mechanics, especially after we just dealt with the Gang of Four, sort of, and stuff like that. Just, I don't know, like this ticked up. Like earlier, it was off screen, it was minus eight, and I chose nothing about what was reformist at all. So there's some sort of hidden mechanic here that forces you to go strongly reformist, which I just do not like. Ugh. Why? It's gotta be. I can't confirm that. But it feels like there's something strongly there making this strongly reformist. But, alright. This is the other side. I did not imagine that we do, but... All allies, report. Oh, no one here. Oh, Albert Speer. Um... What if fate awaited him at the hands of the Gang of Four? It was a merely passing thought. 
Hold on, so there was a time when Albert Spiel could stand in front of a podium on a crowd of thousands and speak words that would get any normal German man ousted as a traitor, and show off for cowardice and Bolshevism, of course. He was never committed to most of what he had said, merely words spoken to rile up his base and strengthen his support, yet Albert Speer overestimated his prowess and underestimated his hardliners. What fate awaited him at the hands of the Gang of Four was now merely a passing thought. His words of being a puppet to the liberalistic whims of the students seemed almost like paranoia now, as he follows the orders of Oberlander and his clique in the NSDAP. His image as a reformer of the Reich is dissolved, and all that remains is the man whose vision has been stomped underfoot by the generation of national socialist thought. There are no more days where Albert Speer can smile and think to himself that he is building a new Reich for the new German man, now he follows orders and attempts to slow the grinding crusher that will tear his ideology into pieces. He cannot imagine that Adolf Hitler would look at him and consider his achievements worthy of respect, not anymore. I don't know, I don't like this ending. I don't like... Both endings, I'll be... Okay, spoiler here, if you haven't seen the... Whoa, Italy, what are you doing? Um, the other end, the former German government collapses. Basically, we kind of saw this one earlier, Vesen, Valoren. Um... He just turned Speer into a puppet, regardless, regardless of extreme. Hey, but hey, you know what? A decrease of poverty, a toast for economists, 10 or 15 percent? National socialist economics at work, my friends. But uh, seriously, like, both sides make him end up being kind of a loser, like, loser puppet. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, that kind of makes sense. So, it is what it is. I never read this one before, if you want to do this, please go ahead. And then Yosef Alb, so be it, so be it. So, it is what it is, but still. Oh, yeah, guys, come on in, come on in. Come, come join the fun. Um... Only 20,000 lost. I I mean, yeah, I know they're slaves and we should be killing them, probably, but, like, we... I lost, like, 400,000 men in this fight over here or something like that. While killing off, like, half a mil one and a half million. So, I'm not sure how you could say this is any worse than us killing off one and a half million t in total in Russia, in this part of Russia, or what was Russia. So, I, I understand it, but, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, the return of Altaki? Oh, yeah, I think things might be about to get worse. So, but this is not the end. Let me just say, we're not, this is not the end. We still have the central route, like I said earlier in the video, that we're going to do next in the next video, and which should conclude the entirety of Speer's campaign. Closing the ports, where was the right moment to listen to my conscience? Speer's going crazy, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't see this as a really bad thing. Well, at least in terms of war. At least in terms of war, this is, this is nothing compared to what we, I did on, to Ruslan off screen, so, uh, brief steering agony, very cool, Bontresco exploded, so, uh, you know, but I mean, like, if it's like an actual slave revolt, and they rose up, and we actually killed them all off, then, yeah, then, the stuff that would happen afterwards, yeah, that, that's not, that's not good stuff, but, well, ghosts never leave, okay, who do you turn to when you when you have murdered your friends? Were they really your friends? Oh, so, no, okay, so, these guys are back, okay, Poland is back, all these guys are back, uh, okay, game, game, please. Fik dish ich werde nicht tun, was du mir sagst. So what does that mean? Screw you, I I would not have done this or something. What do you say? Better be darn fast ceremony. Reality cut short. Um, okay, here. Willy Brand, do you plead guilty or innocent to the crimes that committed against the Greta German Reich, its history, its soldiers, and its people? I'm only guilty of fighting for the German people. Nothing in his mind pushed him into giving up, and when he tried, demanded even to represent himself in court, when he denied, stepped into the back of the courtroom where instead his lawyer would represent his case. He already knew where it would go, though. The man's words were weak, even his case weaker, and this will perhaps be the weakest. When the judge asked him to bow, he yielded. The court hereby declares Willy Brand to be the traitor to the Reich. The sentence is death. He had been in a few trials during his life, but none were short as and as decisive as this. When the two men approached him, he struggled against the handcuffs that forced him to his bench, and even spat out a curse to one of the men. It meant nothing, however. The bag was stuffy and hard to breathe in, it was almost impossible to see out of it. He felt better when he figured out where they were going, just like the family that saw in Russia, they would take him to a basement and murder him in cold blood. No martyrization, no publicization. When Brand's head slammed against the concrete wall, his vision swam, he could feel warm blood seep through his hair. Weakly, his limbs struggled against each other, in a vain attempt to get on his feet as all the joy and idealism in the world faded from him. This was a Willy Brandt whose light in the world had faded, and though he believed in a Germany free and happy, his efforts had been torn down to nothing. Countless smoldered in death and ruin for his vision. When he heard the overpowering yell that signaled the end, Willy Brandt's hope died before he could. Memento Mori. Hey, but at least everyone's back. Oh! Uh oh, we got... Oh! So this is... Yeah, so, so we... we Huh. We got the reformist side, I think, for this campaign, but we got this guy here. Cool. Caucasine, Müller, of course, Poland, Balticum. We don't even have Estonia in the other one, so. And ends with a whimper. 
Uh, let's see. Well, let's read about this. Where, did, where had he gone his last 50 some years in his life? What did Anton make of it? He was a young boy in Poland. Oh, how lovely the fields were all up until the point where they weren't. He grew from a boy into a teenager and from a teenager into a man. And he had settled down with a beautiful girl he knew from just across his home. And they had raised two children. One who was just a bit slow, but didn't matter to him, nor to her, and it never bothered the children's siblings. They had all been beautiful. It seemed been, been beautiful. Had been beautiful. Then, for the past 20 years, Anton was a hollow man. The Nazis taken everything from him, grinding his family into dust and ashes, and only spitting him out, untainted yet broken. How he longed for death and for the relentless pain in his mind that followed him day after day. Then things had begun changing. Finally, perhaps a German was showing mercy, something that else that wasn't sheer cruelty, monstrosity, bloodshed. He had been a man who'd sparked the flame known as friendship with him. And he was a German. What his name was, he couldn't remember. And then one day he'd finally given him his freedom. In a home, he met another woman. Her name was Anna. And she was fierce, perhaps a bit younger than him, but he had been working up the courage to ask her to go on a date with him. Now he laughed about it. Then drew in a sharp breath. The bullet lodged in his stomach made his body numb and his sight fuzzy. And God, how he had hoped that some Nazi would have walked in and put him out of his misery or that some tank rolled over him. Or an artillery show blowing his head to pieces. Or his body. No such thing. No, 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 no such thing. And no help would ever come. He was abandoned by the front line as it had long since moved past him, long into the night. When his con consciousness began fading, Anton and cried, for as much as he wished for death, he was truly afraid of it. He didn't want to let go, even if the pain was overbearing, but reality caught up to him. By the time the sun rose, Antonin was dead. Memento mori. Alright, we'll go as far as we can to see what else is here, because we haven't gotten the ending event yet. Alright, can we nuke Italy now? Now that the slaves have been dealt with, Herr Spider, it is time to launch an invasion into <laughs> Mussolini's descendants. <laughs> uh, hopefully there's another event here too. Ah, Robo Stamp here. Um, I think I've read this one before. If he dies, I shall hold you responsible, Otto. So if you want to buy this, please go ahead. Cool. A packed commission in Russland. Ah, von Runner, you're back. Inside the Third Reich. If you want to buy that, please go ahead as well. I hope the Vuxal is still in there when it come out. Einheits Pax Ausschuss for Russland. Return to the front. Well, there we go. Now Zukov has reunited it. Okay, so that actually is... That actually be really cool. Our army versus them. Um, I think I've read this one as well before, so this is not an exit. So, yeah. I think I read this one, so there you go. Anything else? And also, I hope I don't just get copyrighted for this stuff. That looks really cool. Um, we got 400,000 manpower. They got... We got... Very similar. They have double our divisions, meeting with OBS. I suppose there's no point in arguing, then. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. Not as big as they were when I played as a gang of four. Like, they had literally doubled the size of that army. Um, a lot of fuel. Convoys. Good amount of manpower. Lots of industry. I mean, we obviously have way more industry than them. But anyway, but slaves... Um, let's see. Since Speer's ascension, the number of involuntary workers in the Reich had stagnated. Too much pushback to get rid of the institution. Too much incompetence and corruption to keep it. Now that those subversive reformist elements have been eliminated, Speer's government can refocus itself on efficient slave management. Oh, we saw this up here. Sure, why not? And Vault, Vatalan, Poles do not officially exist, are being dragged from the beds. <clears throat> In Ukraine, members of a once proud Cossack host are surprised at the decline to send meetings by a squad of drunken Wehrmacht soldiers being beaten to unconsciousness before being sold for under the table cash in Russia. Six children of famine racked villages are exchanged for an underfed pig who created chickens. The first major slave expansion in 20 years is taking place. I'll bite my try. Words to live by? Alright, alright. Anything else here? No, not really. Yeah, that's pretty much the end. So, oh, economic reforms? Yes, please. Hey, 10.5%. And once again, we have no interest on the debt, so... Hey! We don't believe in interest on the debt. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. If you want to build up, please go ahead. Yay! Seriously, what is forcing us to go so reformist right now? I don't understand it. So... How does it have a very strongly reformist tick? The new Rex Marshal. If you want to build up, please go ahead. Ah, very good. We're at 96%, though. That's pretty nice. Ah, I wish I could go to war with them, but we'll see what happens. And Zolverine. How I stopped learning about and love the bomb. There you go. If you remember that, please go ahead. Seven, uh, 730 billion Zolverine GDP. And it's mean growth higher than Alps. Okay, if you remember that, please go ahead. 1.4% is the mean growth rate for the fleets. Okay, so earlier we had 22 million slaves. I guess we killed off 11 million, huh? 
That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. We cut off 11 million. It seems like. At least in my opinion, we would have. But, hey, who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet playing a game. Trying to figure out what the, the dads are doing. And another run in the night. We remain. <sighs> yeah, if you want to about that, please go ahead. We remain. Now, do we get some sort of other event here, maybe? Uh, what do we cut that one down? 59 billion is not too bad. I mean, it doesn't really matter since we have that, that one, so... Uh, it was all too easy to forget a person ever existed. We're only so much as a mock that we leave on the world. Albert reflected from his living room. Margaret was out somewhere, not that they pay one much another attention these days. It was all too easy to simply spend the evening gazing into the fire, fill like a piece of paper in and watch it weather and curl. He had almost forgotten his book. It didn't have to do with traitors in the former ranks such as steam men as his current cabinet, so they had been removed. Every piece of paper they had signed was redacted. Every law they signed could be repealed for a sabotage. Even their homes had been demolished and mention of their names had been forbidden from any form of media. It didn't bear saying what had happened to their housekeeping staff. In America, no doubt, they would be telling tales of the daring snub to the Reich, but here no news of their escape would ever run. People might ask what had happened to the ministers, but they would never get an answer, and eventually they would reach their own conclusions. He returned to his book. Who was Hale Stratus? And I remember I did read that one before. I've read most of these before anyway, so... <clears throat> What, can we not make this like Thousand Week Reich and get like Gross uh, Odenstadt Ost Europa or something like that? God, that'd be so cool. That would be insane to have, but that'd be so cool. And Spears Defense. If we're about that, please go ahead. Shifting the blame is much easier than taking it. Well, actually, at this point, construction spending, even if we got rid of this, we'd still have a deficit. I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. We're going as fast as we can. It's 72, of course. 98.5% st stable. Good, good, good. Anoctic. Regime stability goes down, but we need a better industry here. Gleichaltung. Mm, regime stability, conservative side goes up. That's, we like that one. Force the conservative side. Force it, force it, force it, force it, force it. This, the Italians have nukes. They usually get nukes, right? Hmm. 10 to 50%. Cough with Kisinga. It's always, it was always this talent. I just want to see if there's anything else at the end. I really do. So right now we're at 10, 15%. There's two more levels. I've never gotten to 5 to 10% poverty rate. As well as less than 5%. That's like a pipe dream. Smoking the strips. All shall be revealed. Please tell me we get something else here at the end. Please, because I remember this is very similar to... This is almost exactly the same as Gang of Four. I hope it turns out different when TNO2 comes out someday. I really do. do. Oh, man. Economics with Ehad. You should not be missed. We build more civvies here. Oh, yeah, we can. Look at that. Nice. Yay. I ask and we shall we shall receive. Do these people even deserve having the industry rebuilt? After all the slave revolting they have done? Do they deserve it? We're a very stable nation here now. Send in the tanks. Um, at this point it doesn't really matter. Regime stability does go up, but I want to get improve our industry or yeah, you know, this stuff up here. Ten point five percent is not bad. Um all right, it is now July 1st, and anything else here? Yes, no, maybe so. It's, please tell me that's not it. Please tell me we get, oh, we have free Indonesia. We got free Indonesia? Huh. China's looking pretty good. Actually, who's in each faction? So there's a faction, the Coast Prosperity for the OFN. They have the Rome Pact, which, you know, that's kind of cool. They didn't go to the Japanese this time. Sometimes they do that in my campaigns, but the Ionized Pact is looking pretty good, or I'd say so myself. France, which doesn't actually even touch us. All the way down to Iran, all the way through here. Norway, the OFN's looking pretty good. Uh, and who's leading the OFN actually right now? It is... Bennett! Oh, it's not even 73 yet. We'll, we'll wait until 73. Peg to the dollar. I assume he plays Bennett sometime. Bennett sounds like a lot of fun, even though I know a lot of people don't like him. Go more conservative. Os I bought to... You might as well. You might as well. Does that help us out at all? Economic reforms? Yes, yes. Distribute the stuff. Um, I guess that's going to be it. Oh, wow. So you keep doing that. You keep going up higher and higher and higher. That's really nice, actually. 19 billion in annual deficit is much better than 38 billion. So I guess that's going to be it for us. Um, I apologize for not going down the centrist route earlier, guys. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, so I know I went with a very conservative route. Now we got to go with the true, tried, centrist, dangest route. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will go back. Oh, there they go, our nuclear weaponry. Go back in time and get a truly fascist dangus alba Speer. thanks for watching have a great rest of your day